We see our future together with Transnistria, with Transnistria, part of Moldova. The status of this part should be defined in negotiations in the 5 plus 2 format, but also should be supported by the majority of population. Igor Dodon made a very strong point about focusing his activities on solving Transnistrian conflict. I think you should understand that in current environment, there are neither internal nor external conditions to ensure a lasting, political, comprehensive settlement. However, what will be good, and I think the new president, together with the government in this respect, might and will focus on, is to create the better environment, to change the context, meaning to create the platforms for cooperation and interaction in between the two divided uh, parts of the country, and also to leave those multiple barriers erected between the right bank Moldova and its Transnistrian part over the last 25 years of the conflict and country's division. Indeed, the winner of the recent presidential campaign uh, had a very pro-Moscow uh, message advocating for much stronger relations with Russia and actually reorientation of Moldovan foreign policy towards Russia. However, uh, one has to realize that Moldova is a parliamentary republic and the competences, the mandate of the president is rather limited. There is a sizable number of Moldovans who are disappointed in both current government and the model of development and would prefer closer relations with Russia for a number of reasons. I think two are very important. One is for Moldova to regain its traditional export market. Um, more than 80% of Moldovan wines and uh, uh, apples used to be exported to Russia. Now this market is uh, largely closed since 2013. And also a sizable number of Moldovans uh, work in Russia, particularly in Moscow, about 400,000 Moldovans. And I think we are interested in ensuring that they are treated well and have a solid legal basis for their stay. For the future president, this is a big challenge. He has certain powers to promote the anti-corruption uh, agenda, rule of law, justice, and if he'll be doing this, I, I bet there will be stronger support for his uh, mandate in the society. Unfortunately, Moldova ended up to be a very divided society, divided in two camps, uh, separated by the different geopolitical or orientations, and I think it is uh, detrimental to the country's long-term uh, national interest. We have to find platforms how to build unity in the country, and I think building a civic, inclusive, modern Moldovan nation where every person, irrespective of ethnic identity, has its place, but also how to bring people uh, to back the anti-corruption agenda. This is something which is doable. Currently, there are, uh, according to different data, uh, from 600,000 to 800,000 people working abroad. This is about one-third of Moldovan active labor force. They are spread rather equally with, I think, 40% concentrated in Russia and the remaining 40, 50 in uh, Western Europe, but also to, uh, the people went to Canada and the United States. Some of them left the country for good, particularly those who emigrated to the United States and, and Canada. However, many people living in Europe uh, could not integrate fully. And now in the environment of economic crisis, they're thinking about how to come back home. But uh, unless the country manages to change itself and to create proper conditions, which in the first place force people to live not only for better salaries, but for better living standards to countries where their human rights are respected. Unless you change this uh, structure of Moldovan state and type of improve the governance, uh, the chances to stop this trend and reverses are slim.